everybody this is Jen from Gar and Jen's journey boy am I worn out I just came in from doing some work out in the garden what was I doing today I was harvesting roots I'm not talking about root veggies like carrots or radishes turnips rutabagas any of that I was actually harvesting roots and I'm talking about roots from medicinal herbs so I'm going to take you over to my kitchen where I have those roots ready and waiting to be washed and processed. I'm going to kind of explain what I'm doing along the way. So let's head on over to my kitchen. Okay, so these are the three plants that I'm working with today um, from my garden. Um, it's important to note that when you're harvesting roots, to save and dry from your medicinal herbs. You want your medicinal herbs, and these are perennials, you want them to be at least uh, two, uh, closer to three years old before you start harvesting the roots from them. And uh, when I was out in my garden, uh, I only took about a third of each of my plants. So, uh, next year I'll be able to harvest more from them as long as the, the plant does well through the growing season. So what are these plants? Well, uh, this one, uh, this is the purple echinacea coneflower. It has a beautiful purple cone on it. Um, you can also get them in other colors. Uh, but the purple coneflower is what most people use for the uh, medicinal herbs. And this is the root that we're going for. And it doesn't look real pretty right now. Um, like I said, I just harvested this, but it's a big, solid piece of root right there. This one is the marshmallow plant. Um, it's what actually was used in the beginning to make marshmallows before they started using gelatin. And the roots are kind of interesting in this guy. Um, they don't come out as nicely as this. Um, they break off. Uh, these are kind of like really mushy, um, so you have to dig in and break them up. And again, when I wash them, you'll be able to see what they look like better. Right now, they look real nasty. So this is valerian. And this guy, when it grows, same with a the marshmallow, they can grow about six to seven feet tall. And uh, like I said, after they're done with the flowers, I cut them all down. And so this is the new growth in the second part of the season. But this is what the valerian root looks like right now. Kind of a mess, just a big hairy blob. So I'm going to get these uh, different plants washed up. And I'll bring it back here and show you what the roots look like once they're cleaned. Okay, so I cut off the foliage of the plants and then washed the roots out as best as I could. Um, some of these are going to have some dirt in them just because that's the way that they are. A little bit of dirt is not going to kill you, especially if you grow organically. So I'll show you these roots now that they're clean. So this rat's nest here, uh, this is the valerian. I'm just going to snip these off and put them on the dehydrator tray and they will dehydrate nicely. And then uh, I'll cut them up and put them in my jar. This is the purple comb flower or echinacea root uh, washed up as best as it can be. Again, it's a very solid root ball, so it's kind of hard to, to get in all the little cracks and crevices. And I'll use a knife and I'll cut this up into smaller slivers and put that on my dehydrator tray. And then this is the marshmallow root. And I uh, have to be careful when washing this because like I said, the, the marshmallow root is actually what was used to make marshmallows uh, before they started using gelatin. Uh, this, uh, the substance in here is very gelatinous and slimy and ew <laughs> to the touch. So you don't want to wash it too much because it activates that, that um, gel and stuff. So I washed it off as best I could. looks a lot better than it did. And uh, again, I'm just going to slice this up and put it on my dehydrator tray. So I'm going to show you that right now. Okay, so like I said for the valerian, 
I'm just going to take this off and just give it a haircut. Okay. I'm going to spread this out. So there's that. It's good to go in the dehydrator. And what little pieces are in here, once this is dried, um, they'll be a lot easier to get rid of instead of trying to fight with them now. Next, we're going to do our marshmallow just because it'll be easier. So we're just going to take our marshmallow, cut it into sections, and then slice that open. And we want to get it into small slivers because it is a dense root. I'm just going to take it. So, yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and finish filling this up, up with the marshmallow, and then we'll do the echinacea. Alright, so now we're going to work on this big behemoth of the echinacea root. So this one's going to be a little more tricky just because it's just a big behemoth. And I'm actually going to have to get another knife. Okay. So the best way to tackle this guy. There we go. So yeah, you can see how dense that this root cluster is. And that's basically what it is, is a giant root cluster. So we're just going to break this up now that we got it going. So I'm going to finish cutting this up. I'm going to get these guys put in the dehydrator and they'll probably dehydrate at least one to two days uh, depending on uh, the humidity and everything, especially the, uh, the comb flower here with it being so thick. But I'll bring you back um, and I'll show you what it looks like and how I'm going to store these. So I'll see you in a day or so. All right. Welcome back. Um, we are done dehydrating our herbs. Thankfully, it took less time than I thought it would take. Um, I put them in yesterday afternoon. And uh, just slightly less than 24 hours later, they're done. They're almost done um, this morning. But I wanted to make sure that they were completely dry. So I just let them go for a few more hours. So in my dehydrator, I also had uh, catnip going. I dehydrate catnip um, for our cats as well as it's got quite a few good medicinal properties. So I just harvested some of that as well um, and I just threw it in the dehydrator. So I've got my catnip and I'm just going to break the seeds off or the leaves off the stems. When I do catnip and mints and other things, um, I take them off the large stems, but the uh, smaller stems, I, I just leave them on there. And then um, when they're dry, they come right off the stems. Just makes it a lot faster to uh, get them in the dehydrator. And I'm just going to break them up just a little bit and remove some of the other stems in here. Not going for anything really fine because this is going to be making a, a tea and so you kind of want bits and pieces of leaves, not really a powder. Alright, that's a pretty good consistency. Now we're going to put it in our jar. Put that right on in there. It's almost time for me to upgrade to my two quart jar because this one's just about full. But this is pretty much all the harvest from this year. We're not really going to get any more from it. So so that should last. There we go. And I use a label maker to make my labels. Uh, and then uh, when I'm done with it, they actually peel right off. So really easy. Okay, so these are the roots that I harvested yesterday. So this... <clears throat> This one is the valerian, and uh, you can see it's dried out quite nicely. And a lot of the dirt that was in here um, sh uh, will shake right out, not, not a big deal. So that dried really nicely. 
Then this is our marshmallow root. Again, dried really, really nicely. And our echinacea, our purple coneflower root, dried out really nicely. So we're gonna go ahead and get these put away. But before we do that, I kinda wanna show you what they look like when you get them from the store. So I'm gonna set those over there. A bunch of dirt already falling out of there. So this is what our root that I had bought from our co-op and it's an organic so that's kind of what it looks like uh, for the valerian so not big chunks but nice small chunks and uh, so ours doesn't look at too different um, we'll grab that one again so ours is a little bit lighter but you can see the size of the roots are about the same And this is our marshmallow. And see the root pieces in there. And then when I chop these up, they'll look about the same. They're, they got that white in there, the white softness. So they'll look the same. And then this is echinacea. This one's going to be a bit harder to chop up, but you can see kind of what that looks like. That's kind of what you're going for when you're um, getting these preserved, is you want them in those sizes, um, because when you steep these to make teas, which is how uh, these are all used, they're all used to make teas. Um, you can also use them to make infusions, but they get steeped. So you want to make sure that um, the pieces are fine enough that when you steep them, they can extract as much of the nutrients as possible. So I'm going to go get my chopping board and we'll get these put away. Okay, so I'm starting with the uh, marshmallow root just because it's a little bit easiest to see and it's kind of like matchsticks so this should be pretty easy to chop up. So we're going to take it, chop it up. You gotta look, use a little bit of force because these kind of are like sticks. Okay, we're now gonna work with the valerian root. And I'm just gonna take this and I'm just gonna shake it. Help get some of the last remaining bits and pieces of dirt out of here. There's really not much because as it dried, it kind of fell through. Anyway, I'm just going to chop this up the same way we did the marshmallow. And you see, this is chopping up a lot easier. Alright, so this is our echinacea. And if you remember from earlier in the video when I first cut this up, it's a very, very hard root. Uh, very hard getting some dirt to come off there. Alright, so we're just going to take this and the same as we did the other ones, just chop them up. And some of the larger pieces I might actually have to put into a uh, into my coffee mill because my, my knife will not cut through them. And that's fine. Okay, so I've got all my herbs chopped up and put in the jars. I have the new herbs put in baggies to separate them from the older herbs. Um, I simply just don't have enough storage space to have like jars of this year's and jars of last year's. So I separate them with the baggies. So I got our valerian, then our marshmallow, and our echinacea. Again, with my knife, I was unable to really chop up the echinacea. Um, I suppose if you have a larger, um, like uh, like a butcher style knife or something, a uh, cleaver kind of thing, you might be able to chop it up by hand. Otherwise, you'll probably put this in a food processor or like I said, a coffee grinder to make this smaller when you get ready to use that. So these all now go in my pantry, which uh, they're kept in a dark, 
uh, pantry so um, as little light as possible and as cool as possible and these will last for years if they're kept sealed um, you know nicely sealed where no air gets in here kept in a dark place and kept cool so that's how I harvest and preserve my root herbs and hopefully it uh, shows you that it's not too intimidating to do it's quite easy to do uh, it takes a little time um, if you like this video please give it a thumbs up share it with your friends and uh, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already uh, so you can keep updated on when I load new content all right thank you for watching and I hope that wherever you are you are wonderfully blessed bye bye